On the night of November 6, 2020, Chicago rapper King Von will be the victim of a shooting that killed two people, injuring three others outside the Monica Hookah Lounge in downtown Atlanta. The shooting escalated after King Von was awakened out of his sleep in the car by a member of his team who spotted Quando Rondo and his crew, their ops. Now upon Von locking eyes on Quando, King Von and his entourage rushed Quando and Von started beating a life out of Quando senselessly and his entourage surrounded Quando. Quando Rondo's best friend Lil Tim hopped out of their truck and brandished a gun in self-defense to protect Quando. Tim shot King Von four times in the abdomen in which Von was later rushed to Grady Memorial Hospital and he died to come to his injuries. With the music industry heartbroken by the death of King Von, it caused a sharp divide between artists embracing NBA Youngboy and his entire label. As in the eyes of others, Quando Rondo's man's Lil Tim killed Lil Durk's prodigy King Von, which caused many people out of loyalty to Durk to not collaborate on any music with NBA Youngboy, essentially kickstarting the blackballing effect. Although in hip hop music we praise the gangsters, we praise the steppers, and the people putting a real pain in the streets, when your favorite rapper is on the other side of the gun, people's feelings tend to change. Before we go deep into the series of unfortunate events that led to King Von's demise, it's important that you know the history of Quando Rondo and King Von, the two individuals that were once great rap friends that subsequently heard their rap beef due to their loyalty to their big dog, NBA Youngboy and Lil Durk. Youngboy and Durk have had a wild history, going back and forth on the internet dissing each other. However, both of these street artists started out as friends and collaborators with even Durk giving Youngboy praise. In 2017, Youngboy began his prolific run releasing Ain't Too Long and AI Youngboy. With his early breakout songs No Smoke, Untouchable, and Graffiti, Youngboy started getting heavy traction in the streets and began to draw nationwide attention in which he later collabed with Lil Durk on the song My Side. The two remained fairly cordial for the following two years until Lil Durk's project King Von was brought into the picture. King Von was seen on Instagram Live, listening to Youngboy and said that his lyrics were a cap, insinuating he was a fake gangster and not about that life. Fuck Youngboy talking about on this song, bro. What? You talking crazy on this man. Oh yeah? He ain't even like that. Oh! On his ass, now. Nah. On his ass. On <laughs> cap. You got cap in your raps. Now, Youngboy did not take this lightly, and shortly after Vaughn was seen on social media with Youngboy's favorite baby mother, Janine and Michelle. This was the same girl that he had been with for so long, dating back to his solar clip music videos, and the mother of his child that he speaks on mostly in most of his music. After Youngboy seen this, all bets are off, and he posts on Instagram with his son with the caption saying that he wants his son to F King Von's daughter as revenge. It was later revealed that King Von and Janine linked up to record a song, however, the song never came out. Von made a tweet insinuating that he had adult video footage of Janine that would make Youngboy no longer want to claim his baby mother. The Twitter finger games will quickly end and be transferred to the boot. In September 2020, Youngboy would drop Dead Trolls from his album Top. Now, Dead Trolls was one of the most demonic songs he had ever released, and it was legend that the lyrics were directed at King Von. Tell that boy I'ma see him, nigga. Tell him I say don't come fist around his leg. Bitch, that's real, nigga. Seven murders in my hometown. Tell them bitches I did that. As soon as that other boy touched out, I'ma be pushing his wig back. The song caused pushback from Chicago artists, particularly from O Block, the same hood that King Von and Lil Durk grew up at. Now, O Block rappers started going at Quando Rondo heavily online. And Lil Tim backed him up alerting the old blockins to leave Quando Rondo alone because it would get ugly. Fast forward to November 6, 2020. King Von and his old block crew were in downtown Atlanta because he had a club appearance at the Opium. The club appearance was to celebrate the release of his debut studio album, Welcome to Old Block, which was released a week prior and on Apple Music went number one. According to 100K Track, Von's manager, the night was extremely overwhelming for Von. They're celebrating his album going number one. It was his friend Boss Top's birthday, and a lot of his friends from Chicago that he hadn't seen in years came out to support him. With everything so positive going well for Vaughn, his ego was more inflated than usual. Upon leaving the Opium nightclub, Vaughn and his manager got separated from him and his armed security. Vaughn got the drop on Quan Rondo's location that he was at the Monica Hookah Lounge as he was there recording a music video earlier that day, and Vaughn went. Vaughn and his entourage pulled up to the parking lot of the lounge and rushed Quando, and Lil Tim defended him, killing King Vaughn. Although the video is too graphic to show, members of King Von's crew pulled a gun out to kill Lil Tim, who's actually in a point blank range. However, the gun jammed, forcing them to retreat. This incident occurred in a busy parking lot with two police officers, one off duty and one on duty cop, that responded, engaging in the gunfire in front of them. Two of King Von's friends, Slutty and Louie, would shoot at Lil Tim, knocking him to the ground. After the gun jammed, they ran from the scene into the direction of the police, who shot them both. Slutty would be killed by the police 
and Louis would be critically injured and nobody would see or hear from them ever again on social media. The police killing Slutty was something widely believed by the public because the only gunfire that was seen in the ops direction was towards King Vaughn. Multiple Atlanta news sources now to confirm or deny the shooter who killed Slutty. When King Vaughn was killed, the Atlanta Police Department were quick to identify the shooter as Timothy Leagues, aka Lil Tim. However, when Slutty was killed, the Atlanta Police Department made little to no effort to identify who was the trigger man in Slutty's death, almost because they were trying to save their reputation as a police department by covering it up. 100K Track spoke on this briefly in a Vlad TV interview addressing if the police shot Slutty. That's the only person that could have shot him, Vlad. The honest truth. There's no other things going on but police and officials. The standard ground law is something that is very prominent in the South, and technically under the self-defense clause, Lil' Tim should be innocent. However, it gets very dicey when it comes to responsibility and accountability on the Atlanta Police Department. The two police officers made attempts to defuse the situation by shooting at who they saw with guns, presumably identifying them as perpetrators. Since Louis and Slutty were with King Vaughn, they would technically be considered the aggressor in the situation who confronted Quando. However, with all this happening so fast, the police didn't even know who was in the wrong and just started shooting when they saw people with guns coming towards them. In a sit-down interview with Angela Yee of The Breakfast Club, Quando Ronald recalled this incident as an outer body experience, explaining that he didn't even know that he was wrestling and fighting with King Von. I'm letting this group come by. Next thing you know, a nigga hit me. Man, like, I lied to you not, man. It's like I had an out-of-body experience. I never, I never in life had words with them, ever. And you, at this point, didn't know who it was. Ma'am, I didn't know this was him. This would be the first time Quan Arana broke his silence, explaining his side of the story, detailing the series of unfortunate events that happened that night. Two weeks after the shooting, Quan Arana would release arguably the most disrespectful song of 2020, End of story. Although he denies it, the vast majority of hip-hop fans view it as a play on words of the deceased rapper King Von's Crazy Story sequence. The Crazy Story sequence, particularly Crazy Story Part 1, was a breakout song that garnered Von so much attention and notoriety early in his career. Now this three-part installment will come to an end on the day that he was murdered, and Quando Rondo wanted the last say. He wrote End of Story and detailed the self-defense murder that killed King Von. Sometimes the best response is none at all. You probably would let your man's day in 100 dog. See, nowadays, like the fans doing the Polish job, they'll talk the gangster shit, but crown when a nigga get knocked. You're supposed to walk and how you talk. And if the shoe was on the other foot, they wouldn't have said he's wrong. If what they said is understood, we had to make it home. I put that on the neighborhood before they bust my dome, little Timmy right and right or wrong. Quando went even more ballistic, taunted King Von, let him know that it was self defense and that he should have never ran upon him. Even making more taunting gestures about the alleged bounty on his head, which he wasn't afraid of. Everything Quando Rondo detailed in End of Story was entirely true. Hip hop community is rooted in black culture, and we often praise individuals sliding and stepping in the streets. However, when the person who is loved by the public is killed, we switch up like a heartbeat. King Von was a prolific storyteller and a rapper who, without a doubt, was serious about the life he had proclaimed in his music. Von survived the dirty, grimy streets of Chicago just to go sad to some Atlanta demons who he really only had internet beef with. It's been rumored that King Von was responsible and connected to 12 murders in the city of Chicago. However, due to superstar status and street connection to Lil Durk, many people overlooked this. However, the small majority of people believed that if the roles were reversed and Vaughn's friends fired on Quando, he would be praised as a real-life demon, which is a thousand percent true. The ugly truth is that Lil Tim did what he's supposed to do, protecting his friend, especially the breadwinner. When news broke of King Vaughn's death, many artists mourned the loss of Vaughn, especially Asian Doll, his then-girlfriend. Many other rappers gave a special choice of words and showed love to Vaughn, and then came Lil Durk, who was heartbroken. My twin gone. I love you, baby bro. D-Roy. What made the news of King Vaughn even sadder is that Lil Durk found out this devastating information while on Instagram Live, and after fans started spamming this in the comments, he sadly knew it was true. The death of Vaughn sent shockwaves through the music industry, forcing fans of Durk and Vaughn to not listen to Youngboy and vice versa. Most importantly, the situation made hip-hop artists have to choose if they want to be cool with Youngboy and not ever get a feature from Lil Durk or any other of the A-list rappers associated with him. In a 21 Savage DJ Academics interview, he addressed the reason why people pick sides in the scandalous industry. A lot of people are not going to mess with NBA Youngboy because they mess with Lil Durk. The inherited beef of Lil Durk and Youngboy put many people in between a war. The baby was an artist who in March of 2022 did a collab table with NBA Youngboy and a lot of OTIF affiliates of Durk and Vaughn, particularly Mean with 600, were upset because another high profile rapper was embracing their enemy. To which the baby responded, Y'all niggas is funny. 
No nigga or gang in the world is scary enough to choose who he gets money with. He respected King Von, acknowledging that he was a demon. However, he was the only person on demon timing that day, ready to put in pain. Letting the Oblockians know, we are not the same. In 2022, Yumbo released Bring the Hook, where he viciously dissed Von and made reference to the Netflix series Squid Game. Nigga dissed that Squid Game, Oblock Packet rolled up, murder what they told us, Atlanta boy get fold up. This bar was a clear reference of the November 6th murder of King Von. This song elevated the tension of beef between Chicago and Baton Rouge as a whole. The most hated people were winning and making fun of their enemies who still didn't get back for their mans. In January of 2022, Youngboy released his Colors album, which was full of bangers, and Lil Durk and them started dissing each other, sending shots, using money. A month later, Durk dropped Aha. In the chorus of Aha, Durk repeatedly told people not to speak on Vaughn on the internet, and how people have been acting as if they're fearless ever since his Brody died. Many people gave their opinion on the King Von murder and how it all could have been avoided, but no explanation caught as much flack as Brooklyn GS9 rapper Rowdy Rebel. And when King Von died, the little Tim nigga, he had to get out the car and start squeezing right away. You already got your joint. Yo, back the fuck up. What y'all doing with it? His mom of the rip went to kill. Which hate you had already to kill this man? Right. Had the upper hand with bat niggas up and get your dog out of here. You already chose the murder route. Youngbo responded and eviscerated Bobby Shmurda and Rowdy Rebel about their career. Damn, was crazy. I ain't even say this perm having bitch name. Niggas just want to bring it top up. Say, bro. Man, you niggas irrelevant, and I said what I said, bro. You niggas need a nigga like me to keep you going. I ain't doing no falling around this bitch, nigga. This flunk ass nigga want another nigga to jump out the truck and punk fake and then get shot in his face? Man, you sound stupid as the fuck, man. You niggas dumb, man. Say, bro, I don't want no problem with you niggas, man. Stay the fuck out my way. Dang, man. Stop the violence like I said, man. Young boy has for the last couple of years been very inactive on social media. However, when you speak on Lil Top, you will get checked. Throughout the last couple of years, Lil Durk has been severely trolled on every single social media platform with the phrase, slide for Vaughn. No matter where you go on social media, if there's a comment section for Lil Durk photo, you will see slide for Vaughn spammed in the comments, which are mostly being spammed by 13-year-old Timmy's who grew up in the suburbs. The death of King Von resulted in radio stations and DSPs, such so as Spotify and Apple Music, picking sides. Rather than them adding new songs of Youngboy and Quan Rondo to playlists like normal, they only promoted music from Lil Durk and King Von, essentially blackballed Youngboy and his entire NBA camp. To put it simple, curated playlists are how the majority of fans discover new music on these platforms, and the head of playlists at Spotify and Apple Music refused to give Youngboy any reach and airplay. As a result, Youngboy released I Hate Youngboy, which called it everyone who played a part in him being blackballed. Till Apple said F them, they promote a song. They be hating on Tim Aquando, they act like they're wrong. YouTube streamers, they be dick riding, don't react no more. You have with them, don't have with me, that's just how that go. Youngboy even took it a step further, dissing Dirk's deceased cousin Nooski who died in 2014, as well as speaking on Kwando and how he has no filter, referencing his end of story and how he clean up on Al O, referencing an O-Block member King Von being killed. He told Dirk not to bring up his baby mother Jania in response to the song Aha, and spoke out Lil Baby, someone who he collabed with in the past and said baby with him 4PF, four poles firing. Lastly, he sent shots at Big Dirk, Lil Dirk's father, who was in jail for 20 years, a member of the Black Disciples. With so much hate going back and forth, it's very simple to understand why there'll be no reconciliation. In a DJ Academics Twitch live stream, he spoke on Ebro from Hot 97 Radio Station, who's the head of Hip Hop's editorial playlist Apple Music, and his involvement in Black Bong Youngboy and his Never Broke Again label. Nobody from Youngboy's team probably gonna speak on it, but I'll just say it because it's just truth. Um, when Youngboy was locked up, you know, Youngboy was locked up when the whole shit happened, when it came to like, you know, the whole um, Quando Rondo and whatever, whatever. They stopped playlisting anything that was NBA associated. And the reasoning that was given was literally this. This is why he dissed Apple Music on I Hate Young Boy. The reason was given was we don't want to upset the other side. That's factual. The music industry is a popularity contest. And rather than keeping a straight business, favoritism comes to play influencing many aspects of the business. While this chaos occurred, Yumba was in jail for some firearm charges. Quan Rondo and Lil Tim, on the other hand, were free, but their life was at an all-time risk. They were receiving death threats online and had to move Tasco anywhere they went. In August of 2022, Quan Rondo's homie Lil Pab were in LA to do some work, and they pulled up to the Beverly Grove gas station in West Hollywood and were ambushed by three unknown assailants. The assailants shot up their black Cadillac Escalade and Quando would survive but his friend Lil Pab wouldn't be so lucky. 
Pab was killed, and in a video shown by the news, Quando can be seen screaming. Quando is getting beat up in LA and shot at in Atlanta. Now, Quando was a member of the Rolling 60s Crips, similar to a set that LA rapper Nipsey Hussle is affiliated with. After the shooting, Quando Allen denounces Rolling 60s affiliation due to him feeling like he was so loyal to a set that couldn't protect him when he was out of town. A widely known rule for joining a gang is blood in and blood out, meaning a member must be DP and essentially jumped out by former members so they could leave. However, Quando Rondo wanted no part of that. Quando has left the game and has since been making his moves dolo. The most shocking news pertaining towards Lil Tim and King Von. On August 21st, 2023, Noel Pines, the defense attorney representing Lil Tim, confirmed that the felony murder charges against them would be dropped. Now, knowing the background of King Von and his gangster lifestyle, his friends were more than amped about Tim's charges being dropped so they can get street justice handling it themselves. King Von was at the height of his career and died over an internet beef that could have easily been prevented. It's proclaimed that King Von was a serial killer and his tough upbringing and gangster ideology made it irresistible to not press Quando Rondo or anyone, for a matter of fact, testing his gangster. They said the streets only lead to being dead or in jail, and this altercation went the death route. Follow me on Instagram at jrstar one Subscribe to my Patreon, Jared Star, for exclusive hip-hop rap documentaries. Thank you for your time.